My name is Mick, and uh, this is a hammer dulcimer, or a hammered dulcimer. Um, and this particular instrument is uh, built by a great company up in Seattle called Dusty Strings. It's, um, this is like the biggest one I've ever played, and it's got a lovely sound. I really like it. Haven't had it too long, and I'm really enjoying it. But uh, the, the basic dulcimer, you can see uh, off to the side and behind me are a couple that they have here at Artichoke Music that are uh, on consignment. They're much smaller. They're little two or two and a half octave instruments. The, the basic design of the dulcimer is that it's a fifth interval diatonic instrument. So there's this bridge here that's slightly to the left of center that runs up the whole instrument in this trapezoid box. And the notes on this bridge are divided into two-fifths and three-fifths of their overall length, which is the physics that gets you do sol, or uh, in this case, G and D in a scale. And then the way the instrument is tuned, you can see I have uh, individual bridges with uh, uh, double-strung courses. And then underneath, you can see another string crossing. That, uh, there's other strings. That, those courses actually cross the bass bridge and they intersect like so without touching. So for now, we'll just talk about the treble bridge. The arrangement is a simple diatonic scale. It's tuned up one side of the bridge. It's tuned whole step, whole step, half step. And then when you cross the bridge from that first note of the scale, you get another whole step from the fourth, so let me try to explain that a little better. You got one, two, three, four, then the fifth is across the bridge from the first note. So the fifth or the do, re, mi, fa, sol, so do, sol, and then logically you're going up whole step, whole step, half step. So by repeating that, and then a half step, you get your major scale. So that's the way the tuning works. And then on the modern dulcimer that I'm playing here, they've marked my bridge caps with different colored Delrin, the little plastic bridge cap. White marks the beginning of each scale, the beginning and the end of each scale. So I have basically every four notes, I start a new scale. And the, the way the dulcimer is set up, F's a little out of tune, but we'll ignore that. The way the dulcimer is set up, it's a, a circle of fifths going down in fourths, or a circle of fourths if you prefer. I have a C major scale at the top here. Four notes lower, very much the same simplicity. I don't have to think about it. G. Down a fourth, D. Down a fourth, A and on the bigger instrument, E. So that's the treble bridge. Curiously, the same pattern repeats when you get to the bass bridge. So here's G. This next string that's tucked down underneath it here comes up on the bass bridge and is a fifth below, which is my middle C. 
And I have the same pattern going up the left side of the bass bridge. And then I finish my scale on the right side of the treble bridge. Curiously, once I finish this C major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that eight becomes the one of the next octave. So I have two octaves laid out for me in the key of C, which is kind of the main key on a very small dulcimer. And once you know where those notes are, you can play just about any diatonic tune with great facility. That's the basic tuning of the dulcimer. So when you get into a larger instrument, you know, the smaller instrument may only have the key of C. A little bigger, you'll get the key of G for two octaves. And you get the key of F. And of course, you get all those minor keys that come with those. So when I have my key of C, I can play I can play any number of tunes. So I got, I can play jigs in A minor, in C, E minor with my G. With, out of my D scale, really. Okay, that's one thing. When you get into a larger dulcimer like this one, I have a couple other aspects that are nice. Uh, I have, of course, the extended range. By going down, I get more notes. So it's tuned diatonically, the dulcimer, but it does contain chromatic scales. And on a large one like this, it contains several octaves of the chromatic scale. And you can either play them from within your major scale by what I call the hunt and peck method, where they're, they're all the notes of the chromatic scale are contained in this dulcimer. Oops, <laughs> if I remember where they are. Or you can play them in, there's kind of an interesting geometric scale that you can play on the dulcimer where you play basically the half step and the third and the fourth of my C scale. Then you can follow another half step between the third and the fourth. Another one here. So you can kind of So there's a weird pattern. You can learn that when you take a lesson or two. And uh, of course, there are music teachers of all sorts at the Artichoke website that can help you learn dulcimer, guitar, ukulele, you name it, they can teach it. A nice aspect of this, uh, this model of the dusty strings is it has a super bass bridge that's strung in such a way that the, these single fat notes go under both of the two, the bass and the treble bridge. And the super bass is only playable off to the side. And, and on this instrument, you can play it on both sides. The same note. And when you put the dampers on, oh, that's another thing I didn't mention. This instrument is equipped with dampers, which uh, is, uh, there's some felt. You step on a foot pedal, and it brings these bars with felt onto the strings. So it doesn't change the pitch, but it does change the tone. So I'm still playing a G here. Just letting that natural resonance, which is part of the beauty of the dulcimer. But when I step on the damper, it cuts it down, which is really useful when you're playing fast chromatic licks. That just sounds much cleaner, damped, than not. You get a lot of mud. So uh, I like the dampers when I'm playing fasts, especially chromatic stuff. Um, another thing that I have with this particular set of hammers is they have a leather, kind of a soft leather side. And then I can just flip them over in my hands. And I'm just playing on the wood. You could also do a super soft felt on one side and either wood and leather on the other. A lot of people just have different sets of hammers with, with soft and hard material on them. They pick up a different set. I like to flip over when I'm playing, especially when I'm playing an ensemble, when I'm playing in a, in a 
a combo, a hot little combo, I like to flip over to the leather when I'm playing back up and I'll put the dampers down and... switch to the hard hammers to take over the melody just different things lift the dampers up so that's one thing you get with the larger instrument the dampers more notes full chromatic scale uh, and uh, come on down to artichoke and check them out all right thank you <laughs>